Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Navs Effect. I am your host, Naveen Yunglani, and I am thrilled because this morning, Philippine time, uh, 8.18 on a Monday to be specific, we are joined by the whole Phillips family. So we're not just having the chance to talk to Michael and Benjamin, the Phillips brothers. We are also going to talk to his folks and his brother, Isaiah Phillips, who will soon be coming to the Philippines to join the De La Salle Green Archers to make it a three brother affair that will join the DLSU men's basketball program. How's everybody doing today? Let's start with you, Isaiah. Hello, Sir Naveen, a couple of Isaiah, a couple on third Phillips brother. Nice to finally meet you, Poe. Okay, I like it. I like how your Filipino, um, your Tagalog is seems to be ready for the Philippines. Uh, Mike and uh, <laughs> your folks can take it next. How are you? Uh, how are you all doing today? Oh, wonderful. It's uh, so glad to uh, see you again, Naveen. And uh, Glad to see my sons, too, even though they're a little way, I get your answer. Every time we do Zoom, it's always refreshing to see my, our children. That's fantastic. How are you, Tita? Good. Glad to be here in this male-dominated Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> and bright color. Oh, so. yeah. you, you, you're bringing the sunshine right now, Tita. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about How about you, Mike? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm glad, you know, we can get everybody together and uh, it's just so good seeing everybody. Absolutely. And Benjamin, how about you? Okay, Naman Paul. Just so I'm excited that uh, the whole Phyllis family is here. So uh, really, really happy to have, you know, everybody here. So do you, uh, does the family have like um, weekly Zoom sessions like this? Because Michael, you and your folks are in Florida. I say you were in Ohio and Benjamin, of course, you were back in Manila, which we'll get more into later. But how do you all keep in touch, you know, being a close family and being, you know, quite a distance away from each other? Yes. Yeah, so uh, usually uh, we we sometimes do a big family call na, na ganto, or sometimes we kind of do a uh, hot potato. So uh, <laughs> one of us will call like Isaiah and then we'll pass it, pass it around and then we'll call Ben and, and pass it around. So uh, just make sure everybody's, you know, doing well and just right. seeing each other's faces. That's fantastic to hear. And I can see your face right now, Mike, as I mentioned before we started recording. You've got a beard coming along really well. He's, uh, he's trying to be like his other brothers, huh? He's trying to grow it out. Following in your brother's footsteps because Benjamin's beard looks on point. I say his beard looks on point. Uh, and yeah. you, Mike, you're getting along there. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> so before um of course i'm sure that it's a lot of positivity it's been the off season you guys have been getting a lot of time to lay low to chill uh, i know benjamin especially has been keeping up with the off season news who's going where kind of like the uap free agency of sorts <laughs> right uh what a time we live in but let's start with you michael because i think this is the most important part the last time we saw you in the philippines of course there there was some um, concern about your health, because you didn't get to play the last few games, which I know killed you, uh, because I know that you're a competitor. But of course, it was for the betterment of, like I said, your health. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the exact ailment you had was a concussion. And can you just maybe update us on where's your recovery process right now? Are the headaches still affecting you? Um, do you still get? Do you still have concussion symptoms? And uh, I believe you're back to playing basketball. Yes, you know, la la la, yung sinabi mo na I was really, you know, frustrating time, you know, uh, watching my teammates, you know, battle out so hard. And um, but I'm just really, really grateful and blessed that you know the management took such good care of me. And and uh, uh, even though you know, meantan tigas naman ang ulo ko, I wanted to play, play, but uh, I'm grateful that you know they took care of me and kind of you know helped me realize you know uh, my health, you know, was really important. So. Um, you know, everything, you know, has is is a, a plan for God. And so right now I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, my headaches are a lot better. I'm having concussion therapy here in the States. And uh, mm -hmm. I think the real uh, thing that's been helping me is just being with my family. That's been really uh, a big part of my recovery. Do you know the exact game or moment where you suffered the concussion? Yes, I believe uh, we're not clear re uh, to the exact uh, because it's a little bit tricky, those concussion symptoms. But I had a specific impact against Ateneo game. I had tried to take a charge on Anj Kwame, which is, <laughs> I don't recommend doing that. And uh, I had hit the, the back of my head and I had another incident where mm. uh, uh, the Wonga had hit me uh, real hard in, in the front. So uh, one of those two, we believe, is 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 the cause. 
Right, right. So the concussion rehab process, what do you do? Um, what's the process like? Because I head injuries are a little more tricky. So I'm guessing the recovery process for that is a little more complex than your usual um rehabilitation. Right. It's 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 not something that, like you said, it's like a sprained ankle uh, or you know, like a a a um pulled hamstring, something like that, that you could just do a certain number of steps. For the concussion is really tricky. It's really, really based around, you know, rest, rest, rest. That's what uh, uh, my doctor is here and in the Philippines have said. And so um, that's my biggest problem now is resting. Good thing mm-hmm. my parents kind of tell me, Mike, you know, you know, slow down, you know, let your body rest, let your mind heal. And so um, luckily I was able to uh, kind of, I'm kind of past that full rest part. And now I'm doing some exercises, you know, some hand-eye coordination things, some right. uh, videos things and so uh just kind of taking it step by step but you're not yeah go for it Tito go for it yes one thing here in the, in the United States even started in high school they always take a baseline because they take uh, concussions seriously here mm-hmm. so being back with his doctors they always had a baseline test every athlete has to do that and so when they have a concussion they have a protocol uh they have to follow in order to release them and so Mike Fortunately, he has met all those protocols. So now he's, we just saying, okay, now let's slowly get back in shape. Right. right. Uh, you know, because um, he also had, like, it was fun. I, I used to look at it, like, Mike, Mike, you're losing weight. What's going on? I guess mm-hmm. he had eight, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah stomach. Right. right. So now he's back up to what, uh, 230, 230. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. 230. So his weight is back, his strength is back. So it's, uh, we're blessed. He's out of the woods now. So it's, it's now it's just a matter of him getting back in shape and getting ready for the next procedure, next season. That's fantastic. And that's great to hear. So are you doing five and five work already, Mike, on the court? Yes. Well, I'm doing a lot here. I know my, my biggest coach here is my dad. He's been Mm-mm. training here. And uh, I know, especially I'm excited to go back and, and, and play with all my teammates again and get some uh, full practice. And so I'm um, doing as much as I can to get ready because uh, I know it's going to be a great off season uh, this, uh, for getting ready for 86. Definitely. You know, last season was so unique, I would say. And it was the first two seasons for you and your brother. But we don't usually have two UAAP seasons in the same calendar year. Not to mention you all had the, the off-season tournaments, like the D-League, the, the fill-all tournament. And there was just so much basketball being played that the the demand on your bodies it was incredible how so many of you were able to get to the finish line and play throughout just because of the attack, how taxing it was and how, you know, I can't even imagine at first you have a bubble, you come out of the bubble, you still play basketball nonstop and then you have another season right away. And it was, it was different, but at least 2023 will be back to normal ish, at least pre pandemic. Uh, I see Tita particularly agreeing with the rest part. And of course, like the, mo- um, she's the mother, she's always thinking health first, health of her kids first. So, you know, from an, from a, from the perspective of someone halfway across the world, Tita, what was it like just hearing the stories and then hearing that someone like Mike had to go through a concussion, you know, injury that was quite scary? Well, it, it was very scary, and, and I felt really confident that the doctors there and the coaches, the managers, they were all taking really good care of them, and that really put our mind at ease yeah. because when your son and your baby, if you will, since he's our youngest, is so far away, mm-hmm. you are concerned and you worry, and so they were great about keeping us up to date about every single thing and sending the records and even allowing us to talk to some of the doctors. Yeah. It's really yeah. wonderful. Uh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, that's wow. great. Are, is your mind more at ease to let Michael come back to the Philippines now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's um, it's great to see him there and just be so in his element. The hardest challenge is trying to coordinate the calls because someone's always <laughs> going to be better. As you know, like today. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And by the way, I like to thank you all for you know staying up relatively late. Uh, I know some of you have early bedtimes. You you and Tito got to visit the Philippines last year, right? For I believe that was about a week after the first season of the boys. What was that experience like? Yes, yeah, it yes. was wonderful. I mean, yeah, Sir Raffi. Mother's Day. Yeah, Mother's, Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Sir Raffi and his family and the other managers, man, they well, the Filipino people in general, man, they have such loving hearts, such family-oriented. 
And that's one of the main reasons we felt comfortable letting our sons go there because uh, you guys are just so just so down to earth, so loving, mm. supportive. The Italian community is so supportive. So when we got there, we was like, this is nice. This is, you know, <laughs> we, I mean, it's too many people for, you know, shorter time for us to say thank you to, but it's like, man, they treated us. I mean, even the players, mm -hmm. everybody just treated us like family. So thank you guys for that. Thank you. Absolutely. Now let's go to Isaiah a little bit because Isaiah is going to be the new Phillips brother in town playing for the Green Archers. Uh, Isaiah, so when are you coming to the Philippines? How many, do, would you know how many seasons you would get to play in the UAAP? And um, are you already part of DLSU's roster or are you going to essentially be trying out for the main roster? What's the situation going on right now? Right. So I graduate here from Miami University here in the States in May. Okay. And after May, I'll be flying over to the Philippines. Um, I'm very excited. Uh, Pero I want to try my best to make the team first. Alam ko na maraming magaling na players sa LaSalle. So it won't be easy, but I want to do my best to, you know, try and help LaSalle um, win more games and, you know, just represent uh, LaSalle community. Right. So you would essentially be enrolling in the master's program in the LSU? Correct. Correct. Right. And now, that yes. that would give you like two years of playing eligibility? Am I right? Two or three years. Okay. Two or three years. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and, same. Three, three years. Three years. Okay. Same as Benjamin, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. right. And how old are you, Isaiah? I'm 22 years old. Okay. So that would... That twenty five. That would give you three years, and so you are studying in the University of Miami right now. Oh, oh, yes. And are you playing basketball for University of Miami too? Um, no, sir. I'm going on for uh, academics. My uh, major is um East Asian Studies with a minor in Japanese, and I've got most of my scholarship money from um academics through Miami. So I'm not playing uh basketballing. Hey, that's Miami. awesome. Very intelligent guy. But do you still play ball often? <laughs> Yes, yes. I try and play, you know, um, games, trying to get live basketball, you know, as much as I can mm -hmm. and just trying to train every day and get stronger and faster and, you know, do what I can. And what position do you play? What kind of game do you have? Um, because we know that Michael is a, a banger down there in the paint. He likes living in the paint. He likes being a little mean sometimes to the other teams, uh, which is needed, of course. And we know that Benjamin has established himself as a floor spreader. He's now shooting three-pointers, and of course, he's a hustle guy. So how about you, Isaiah? What's your game? I'm a defense-first type of player. I feel like I can bring a lot of energy on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. And also on the offensive end, you know, in the post two short mid-range jumpers is something I work a lot on and trying to improve, you know, uh, for the tryout. And hopefully I can showcase that um, this upcoming uh, tryout. But usually my game is just, you know, um, run the floor, do the dirty work, you know, die for the loose balls, support the player and just right. ask what uh, coaches would ask for me to do and go out there and try and do my best. Are you a multi-sport athlete as well? I believe you box as well, right? Boxing might even be your first sport. Yes, boxing is my first sport. You know, it's my passion. You know, I love boxing. And I also did play volleyball too in um, high school. Me, Ben, and um, we played varsity on high school for volleyball. Mm -hmm. But um, boxing has always been my passion. I still do it for conditioning and to get back in shape and stuff. So boxing has always had a special place in my heart. Given that boxing is such a major sport here in the Philippines in particular, is that something you hope to pursue? Maybe to be a boxer here in this country? Well, right now, all I'm trying to focus on is getting my body and my mind ready for uh, DLS LSU uh, practice for basketball and pursuing my education at uh, DLSU. Well, after that, we might have to see what we can do about your boxing career because <laughs> there are a lot of <laughs> avenues here. So if you had to compare your basketball game to another player that you watched either in the NBA or UAP, of course, we're not saying you're the same person, but if right, of you had to make a resemblance, which player would you probably connect it to? Uh, I would say Kawhi Leonard. You know, he's so brilliant defensively and he makes those defensive adjustments and stuff and he's able to hold you know multiple people right and just watching his energy and how he runs the floor and then he can also do it on the offensive end too so i try and replicate my game as close as i can 
and try and get a lot of tips and tricks from him, you know, that I can practice on and improve and, you know, watch his, how he views the game and his IQ. And so I watch a lot of Kawhi Leonard too. Fantastic. All right. Now let's go to Benjamin. So Benjamin, you've been back in Manila over a week now, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and well. you are training right now with both the men's volleyball team and the men's basketball team. Like you mentioned, one to four is men's volleyball, four to seven is men's basketball. So that's about six hours a day of training. Not to mention you are still taking your classes. You are a master's student. So after a a break, a Christmas break, you get to spend time with your family, you come here and right away it's boom, 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 boom. You know, it's like work, work, work. We got so much to do. Not to mention you're having, a, you're speaking in front of like almost a thousand people at sales conferences now. So that's oh, another okay. major accomplishment. Congratulations about that. Um, just share about your current day-to-day -day objectives, what you've been up to, because I know that, you know, you've been quite busy. Oh, so I uh, know. Uh, so Umaga, usually I try to wake up around um, 6 30 or 7 a.m. And um, because I still do a lot of business uh, back in the States. So I try and just quickly get updated with all of the companies that I'm running over there. And then usually I take that time in the morning after I have my, my quiet time with the Lord uh, or if I speak to my family to really work on my thesis. Uh, it's, it's my thesis term. It's my last term. Uh, so, son, I can defend, you know, my thesis successfully with the help of, you know, the wonderful uh, academia, uh, academia, you know, programs that we have at LaSalle. So I can defend that thesis and graduate my master's uh, mm -hmm. in April. That's that's the plan. So I can start my doctorate uh, hopefully in May so I can follow by, you know, my mother's footsteps. Um, mm -hmm. she, you know, she's the OG. She's Dr. Sharon. Okay. So, um, you know, that's 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 one on the academic side. And then usually around 11 or 12, I, I try and have a quick lunch and I stretch and, you know, do a lot of rehab on my body. And that's the first first of the six hours of my practice, you know, at 1 p.m. So it starts with volleyball, getting really acquainted with with the team and the coach. I came really late um, to to the, you know, to the season because the season opening is maybe three or four weeks away. Correct. So I'm yeah. really having to, to catch up and learn the system of coach and, and really hope that I can fit in. And, and I, I'm really it's more of a tryout for me as well. Um, because, you know, there's some wonderful guys on that volleyball team. They're highly skilled, highly competitive, and I'm learning a lot from them as well. And then so after the three hours of volleyball, so but I mean, jumping, but I mean, lateral movements, you know, it, it's it's pretty tiring. You know, volleyball is no joke. I go right, right into uh, Coach Topex's um, basketball practices. And, uh, you know, that's from uh, 4 to, to 6.30, 4 to 7, you know, and weights are in there as well. So it's pretty demanding. Um, but, you know, when you're when you're given so much opportunity um, here at LaSalle, you want to maximize and give just as much as you can back to the school. So that's just my sacrifice, you know, to the LaSalle community, to the Filipino people and, and to the Lord for giving me these uh, athletic gifts. So, you know, that's the, that's my small part I can contribute to this world. Awesome. Wait, first, I have to ask, though, are you concerned in any way that, you know, training six hours a day every day, not to mention the laterals, the explosive drills, all the all the body movements required for volleyball and then to go to basketball. Are you concerned it might get so taxing that you might hurt yourself? Uh, I would be concerned if, if I hadn't done this before, um, but Noom, you know, Noom High School goes, my, my dad died, uh, you know, my father always said volleyball is a great cross training for basketball. So in one aspect, it might, you know, seem as if I'm doing a, a lot more explosiveness or a lot more, uh, you know, high range of, of motion on my body. But a lot of it is actually uh, compatible with, with both training. So it actually helps, uh, you know, ease a lot of a lot of injuries. So, you know, my jumping is a lot better in basketball because now I know how to land because of volleyball. My timing is better in volleyball because of the things that I'm doing in basketball. So they're a cohesive set of, of skills that I'm able to balance on the court. And not to mention, we have some of the best strength and conditioning uh, and rehabs here at LaSalle, you know, with, with our PT. So uh, I'm just like Mike. I, I never know when to stop or slow down. So they tell me, you know, you don't have to do all the reps for six hours straight, you know, really take some time and manage your body through, these, through both of these practices. Um, so, you know, I, I really credit my coaching staff for taking care of my body as well. Yeah, and you know, you're right. You can mix volleyball and basketball, and you proved that last UAP season when you tried to save that ball from going out of bounds. <laughs> well, I was trying to get there. Made a volleyball move that, you know, oh, I was man. just fortunate enough to be baseline in that moment and capture that. I posted, and oh, it just man. like totally exploded. 
explodes, but it looked cool though. I mean, and you nearly saved the ball. Credit to you. Uh, so close, so close. <laughs> so close. Right? That would have been awesome. Um, no, actually, it was awesome. Um, so tell me about the difference of the culture of the men's volleyball team compared to when you're with the men's basketball team. As I'm sure you know by now, the Ateneo Blue Eagles are once again on top of the UAAP Men's Basketball Wars after reclaiming their throne in the Season 85 Finals. And what better way to celebrate your excitement about their return to glory than to purchase Get Blued Season 85 Championship shirts. As always, Get Blued provides the best Ateneo apparel out there in the market and you can get your hands on the Season 85 Championship shirt for only 695 pesos. It's available in sizes from extra small up to quadruple extra large and is available in four colors, Acid Black, Royal Blue, White, and a Bonfire Edition Black color. You can also purchase these shirts at Laz Mall and Shopee Mall and make sure to always buy the original merchandise. And now, back to the episode. Mm. Well, well, volleyball in itself is, is a different game. It's a different style. It's a different culture. Um, one, because there's not as, as much contact with the other team because you're on two sides of the net. So really, it is a familial sense when you're on the LaSalle side of the court. After every point, you celebrate. It's a lot faster. You know, mm. it's, a, it's a sprint to 25 or, or a race to two when it gets to the end of 25 points for those who, who don't follow volleyball closely. But you celebrate every point. Every point, you know, is a team effort. It takes all of the players from the serve to the pass to the set to the spike to the block to the dig again all of those things are cohesive nature with with the volleyball players which means that everybody had a role in that point and some of it's the same as basketball you know you, you still have everybody passing the ball assisting rebounds spreading the floor shooting um, but in volleyball it's 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 a bit more tighter just because there's no contact with the other team and it's a faster sprint to win that set Whereas in basketball, you, you kind of can have the ebbs and flows of the game. Um, but the culture of volleyball is just really phenomenal. Our coaching staff there is is, is top tier, I think, in this country. And uh, it's really my goal and my plan, you know, Lord willing, if, if I can make the team, to have us reach the Final Four again. Um, because there's a, a lot of really good volleyball being played in the UAP. NU is really good. UST, Ateneo, you know, I mean, there's some really good volleyball programs here for the, for the men's. And, uh, you know, we, hopefully we just want to – take what we can and learn from the women's as well because they're phenomenal to watch and learn from. Oh, they are the ultimate dynasty of Lasallian sports at women's volleyball team, if yes. we're being <laughs> honest. You you did mention to training with new DLSU head coach Topex Robinson who was officially announced as the head coach of the Green Archers last week. Something which I'll brag a little bit. I got to post. <laughs> I I knew nah, maybe. In... <laughs> no, no, no. Let's get back now. No, but... um. What has it been like, you know, under Coach Topex? I know it hasn't been a lot yet, but I do know that he's starting to round um round up his staff, which will include Kaloy Garcia, who was a former college head coach and is a former PBA head coach too. And you've got Willie Wilson, former DLSU Green Archer, former LaSalle champion. Still got Coach Gian, Coach Mon, Coach JB, and of course, I think they're waiting on Coach Cholo, who should be giving an answer on Monday as we record this. Um. But what has it been like? Has you have you guys been training? Has Coach Topex been like handing practices already? What can you tell Michael and I say about what to expect when they get back here? Um, well, I, I think it's just been a fantastic um, addition to the program. We're so humbled and blessed to have Coach Topex, but we also really want to sincerely thank Coach Derek and that coaching staff. Um, for for really building the foundation for us as well. I mean, they, they were phenomenal in our first two seasons in terms of actually, you know, reminding us what the South culture is really about. And now that we have Coach Topex and, and his coaching staff, a lot of our players are, are still the same. You know, we still have that core. Michael and I really talk about the core of the South and and really what can we build um, to to instill a winning championship culture. And uh, I think Isaiah will be really excited to see which Coach Topex is, is building. Um, the, the first practice that we had, I think, on, on Friday uh, with Coach Topex is, you know, we had some skills, we had some things that were going on, but he really spent a lot of time uh, teaching and talking. I mean, he was on the whiteboard and and he really told us about the first of his five pillars. Uh, we don't we don't know the other four, but the first one was joy. And so mm -hmm. he really wants to bring the joy back back to the uh, to the players, you know, make it fun to play basketball again within his system, uh, really bring the best out of all the players. So, you know, I, I think uh, everybody is really excited, you know, as we compete for another championship. And uh, we really want to uh, build on what we we're trying to do, you know, last season, 
now we have a whole year of this off season to, to really prepare. And I think coach Topex is, is a, is a really good and perfect fit for, for the, for the culture, for the team. Right. And you know, coach Topex is 48, but when you look at him, he looks like he's, he himself <laughs> is going to go to college classes. Exactly. <laughs> I thought he was going to put a jersey on when he first came in. <laughs> hey, hey, bro, he might still put a jersey on and like drop, <laughs> drop buckets against all of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, definitely, it feels like Coach Tope, and even during the coaching process when his name kept coming up, it it did feel like Coach Topex would bring um a breath of fresh air, and that's not a knock on the former head coach, Coach Derek Pomarin, and the other coaches that LaSalle had, but it's just more of Coach Topex's uh demeanor, you know, he's what he believes in and the positivity optimism that he always seems to have with him, which I think is infectious and going to be very important for a collegiate basketball program. So that's very exciting to see. Mike, I want to ask you, did you f- entering last UAP season, did you feel like you guys were the favorite to win the UAP champion championship? Well, uh, for me, any kind of season, my dad taught me this, uh, no matter, you know, how, uh, good you know our team is I always kind of view uh, us as always being the underdogs even mm. if we have you know, um, a, a great uh, program great coaching staff uh, that's always kind of been my mindset I know we had a lot of uh, pre-season uh, success you know with the with the D League and, and trying our best in the field oil and so um, my biggest thing that I felt with the team was just like uh, what a lot of uh, was, us were saying was we have a, a very good core um, that we hope that we can really look to build for these next couple of years. And so um, just we have a good uh, core group of young guys. And so, um, yeah, but I, a lot of those guys, you know, they, they fight hard tooth and nail. And so I, I kind of have that underdog mentality of us. Yeah, well, if Ateneo can call itself an underdog, then it probably that's how should as well, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, now anyone can call himself an underdog. You know, having Evan also announced the same night that it was announced Coach Topex would be the head coach, Evan also announced, um, he did send me a message that he would come back to. And, you know, what's it going to be like having someone like Evan, you know, in his final season as a veteran presence on the team? I think it's just a great uh, dish. I mean, having Evan there has really, really helped. He really is a floor general, um, also in the locker room. But a lot of the younger guys really look look up to him. Even you know, me and Ben, we we you know love having him on the court, and he really, really has that passion. You know, you see it every time uh, we we lose those big games, even the small games. You know, he's he's the one who's 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 most torn up, and you know, he feels the loss, and he always takes it on his shoulders, which mm-hmm. I try to you know, help him help him you know it's not on you but that's just his you know his mentality he always wanted to really win and if if we win it's it's because of the team but if you lose he he likes to take it all on his shoulders and so um I think one of the big mentality of our team this year is really trying to give him that last year that last championship that he's been working so hard with us for absolutely and you still will have a stacked roster into season 86 now Losing Deshaun, obviously, is a challenge just because of what he brought to the team in terms of his scoring punch, all-around game. But you did get used to playing without him towards the tail end of last season. And you have some new guys coming to the team. I know Jeremy Robinson is going to play his first season. because He didn't get to play last season because I think he came a little late into the offseason and didn't get the time to prepare. So he's going to be playing. He's going to be coming in. And also you have Deron Mitchell, who is a sharpshooter playing his lone season. Ben, what can you say um, about those two guys that people should expect about how they're going to perform on the court? Absolutely. Well, I think they bring um, a dynamic two-way game. Uh, well, when, when I think of, of DJ or, or Deron Mitchell, you know, already, you know, coming from the NCAA in the States, you know, he's a proven shooter. You know, he's a he's a proven two-way player. So I'm really excited for him to really kind of uh, come here and, and gel with the team. And the few practices that he came, I mean, he, he had some transition dunks. He had some lights out threes. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a player. Same with Jeremy Robinson coming straight out of, you know, high school from Hawaii. Um, you know, he, he's really looking to adjust to the to the Philippine style of basketball. And sometimes it's a bit harder if you're not coming from college like DJ is, but you're coming from high school. Um, but I think in time, you know, he'll be able to really understand the game. He, he's smart enough to learn Coach Topex's system along with all the other guys that we have coming in. Um, so I'm really excited for those two, you know, in addition to, to hopefully Isaiah here to, to really kind of round out, um, you know, the, the new learnings that we want to impart, you know, from for the team. 
Yeah, for sure. And you know, when I interviewed Jeremy, the first thing he said was, you're going to see a lot of amazing dunks out of me. So I'm going to remind him about what he said. Uh, he's got to live <laughs> up to that. You know, maybe have some highlights. I say, uh, sorry, remind me again, which high school did you play for? Uh, would you remember your high school basketball averages? I want to know off the top of my head. Um, last time I played in high school, I think it was my junior year, me and Ben. And Mike was playing all on the same team for a while. Which team was that? Which school? Uh, Fairfield High School. Fairfield in, Senior High School. In Ohio, right? In Ohio. Okay, yes, yeah. In Ohio. And you were playing what position? Were you a four or three? I was a four, four and five. Okay. Four and five position. You, yes, you're sir. six foot what? Six foot eight. Okay, six foot eight. So about the same size as Michael and Benjamin, essentially. Oh, both, yes. Yes, awesome. Okay, go for it. But... um. Yeah, you know, um, playing back in those high school days, you know, um, I've put on a lot of weight. You know, I grew a lot. Um, I didn't get the opportunity to, you know, play in college. You know, um, I was uh, dealing with some um, health issues, um, but those are all resolved now and mm. getting back stronger and, and better. And, you know, uh, waiting for those tryouts is, is, is my main focus right now. And I'm just super excited to be able to showcase the hard work and be able to just um, do my very best in the tryouts. What medical or health issues did you have to overcome? Yes, I just had some surgeries on my feet. I had okay. some ankle issues that's been 100% recovered now. Both uh, feet? Me. Both feet Both had feet. issues? Oh, okay, yeah. And so you had surgery on your ankles? Yes, ankles. And, and they made an incision and uh, had some extra bones that need to be taken out. Uh, okay. But all that is 100% recovered now, and I'm just very blessed to have those uh, be fully recovered. How many years ago was the injury? I would say about it was five or six years ago. About five okay. or six years. So, ago. so it's been a long time. Great. And then, do you envision yourself playing a similar similar role as Ben with DLSU? Yes, I I envision myself playing a similar role as Ben. I just want to do. Uh, whatever I can to help the De La Salle basketball team. You know, I'm not trying to go in there and become a superstar. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm not there to, you know, take anybody's position or anything. I'm just going there to do my very best. You know, I'm very humble for the opportunity to try out for DLSU. And I just want to work hard and, and give that energy to the team. So technically, you're going to be part of the DLSU pool, but you're trying out for the main roster. Am I right? Correct. Correct. Okay, awesome. So now I want to talk to Tito and Tita here a little bit because, you know, one of the aspects that's sur not really surprised but really enamored me about Mike and Ben when I first got to know them was how close-knit, how respectful, how dignified they were as human beings, not just as athletes, but also considering their dedication to being students, being top performers in the classroom and in athletics and also outside all of that, just being like really kind, decent, respectful human beings. And you could see that that energy they have is something that even the fans and everyone else in the Philippine sports scene really respects because they're kind to fans who ask for pictures, who ask for autographs, or even players from the other team. I mean, I remember Mike's first season, he would grab a rebound, accidentally elbow somebody, which was part of the game, not his fault, and then say sorry to the guy while he still had the ball, and then pass it and like run back. So just upstanding human beings, right? Um, Tito, Tito, maybe you could give us a little bit of a preview of the kind of upbringing and how you decided to raise your children, which led to them being the fine young men that they are today. Yeah, well, raised them in a uh, God-like house. You know, mm -hmm. we, we put God first. And I really, we really wanted them to understand that as young men, not only become uh, great young men or great young athletes, but great Christian. Mm -hmm. and so, uh, and then and we always wanted our family to be close. We, I mean, we had them like boom, boom, boom. So they were all close. And we told them, like, no matter what, uh, you guys take care of each other. Right. And everything else would take care of itself. I said, you know, always treat people kindly. Uh, treat them like Jesus would. Follow the path of Jesus. And I, we always put them on a path. Mm -hmm. And so 
and they always uh, used to make fun of me like, Dad, you have plan A, plan B, plan C. <laughs> I said, yes, you know, always have your first plan. And then, you know, life always throws you curves, like my uh, middle boy. And all honesty, he was our best athlete. But when he was born, he had an extra bone in his 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 uh, ankle. And it was all right until I guess he started growing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he could have played on it. But I said, Isaiah, I know you love boxing. <laughs> so let's let's, you know, put all your energy into boxing. And we'll review, you know, go back to basketball later because he wanted to do like his brothers. I mean, you know, basketball was all our, fi our family's, you know, game. Mm hmm. He excelled in boxing and then it was time to go to college. He said, dad, I, I think I just want to really focus on academics. And I was saying he's following what the Benjamin did when Benjamin went to college. He said, dad, I just really want to, you know, do academics. And so he did that. And, and now he said, you know, dad, I, I really miss my brothers. I miss my brothers. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, let's go back to basketball. And if you have opportunity, Let's, you know, let's see what happens. So I know I'm going down back in Ohio probably in a few months, and we're going to put the finishing touches on it. Mm -mm. And this guy's taking 20 credits this semester. Wow. Yeah, because, you know, he wants to be finished. So, so. But we always uh, had our guys put goals out, and then even if you don't uh, achieve them, it's the journey. And then his mother... Their mother being a psychologist, well, I let her explain. Because <laughs> <laughs> she really is the one who, like, you know, I was just, uh, you know, hey, I fuss at them, like, do this, do that. But then she would take time with them and nurture them. I mean, very loving. This woman is so loving. I was the hammer. She was the uh, sweet roll. And so, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> that. That was pretty funny. That was great timing. But Tita, the floor right. is yours. So, yeah, we, I mean, we, we double teamed when we had to, or, you know, good cop, bad cop. But uh, you know, my wife, she's the one who really, um, she really instilled the kindness and sweetness. Like to say, she's sunshine. <laughs> Absolutely. She, she she does look like sunshine right now, Tita. So tell us about how it was like raising these three young boys. I think that when we had our family, we made a decision. You know, we got married a little bit later. I was 28 or 30 or yeah, yeah, he was 30. 30 right. So, you know, it wasn't like our, we didn't get the opportunity to be like young parents. Mm -mm. So um, we both had, you know, like our careers. And so what we did was we, we sacrificed um, and we tag teamed our child care for the boys when they were young. And so when Benjamin, my husband, would come home from work, um, I would say tag, they're yours. And then I'd go to work and then mm -hmm. we'd go home wearing one of them in a papoose. <laughs> and, um, so there was just a lot of... Um, Time sometimes that he and I didn't see each other that much, but we knew that was just for a season. Yeah. And it was really challenging having three very busy, active boys. Naveen, if you would have seen our schedule when they were on three different teams, we oh, had a good man. coded grid <laughs> of when they went where and what game and what time. It was crazy. Yeah. But but that was just for a season. And now, you know, we're able to still stay close even thousands of miles apart so it, it's really a yeah absolutely um the your tita you're the filipina if i'm not mistaken you're half filipina right or full yes, of my mom, yes my mom's from cebu and she met my dad when he was out in cebu for the peace corps okay and, you know, they were both teachers and he tutored her and they fell in love and then moved here to the states so, so that okay so you were born in the states already i was yes mm -hmm. right and when were when did the boys get their filipino passports did you make sure they got them at an early age they didn't get them until um their passports so they got them at an, an, an early age and just enjoyed their filipino relatives mm -hmm. so both here and abroad we were able to be immersed in that the Filipino culture. And so having my cousin in Indiana, just a few states away, 
she came and lived with us for a while and we just had a lot of we had a lot of good times with some of the relatives that we have here and abroad mike have you gotten your filipino passport yet because i remember last time it was in the works right right and a uh, biggest thing is that you know just having uh i know when mom had came uh, to the philippines we were able to all kind of be together and so um just how we are now just kind of you know how we are now like mom hearing mom's story here and everything with with you know how how you know she kind of just grew up and raised us like just having those filipino roots is just something that it's just kind of always been a blessing you know coming back for sure to and kind of it's just always been a surreal experience i never really thought i would be you know going to the philippines when i was younger but thankfully god kind of worked everything out for us and gave us this opportunity and so it's just been a blessing to kind of have all three of us hopefully if isaiah makes the team and, yeah. and kind of continue um that that filipino roots we have no yeah for sure but i also want to know um do you have your filipino passport yet just in case in the future you might be able to play for the national team yes i do yes i do oh okay awesome so you got it after 16 years old i believe so right well yeah after 16 it was in the works yeah i remember that story um but who knows you can always apply for an exception um and maybe it will work we will find out because i think you would be definitely someone that the team can use in the future i want to ask tito and tita some questions okay some random questions about you boys growing up so who was the biggest troublemaker growing up it was Isaiah. i would say Isaiah. Hey. <laughs> so, so, okay he's next, the comedian, he's, he's a comedian. <laughs> next question did these boys used to have like petty little fights growing up i mean like normally brothers do especially mike and benjamin because, uh, you know, the oldest and the youngest, and they're so much alike. And Isaiah was always the uh, peacekeeper. Uh, <laughs> that was, I mean, that's why it's so, it's such a blessing that they both uh, were over at the same time now. I mean, they really bonded. I mean, we was always close, but, you know, Ben was the oldest. Mike was the baby. So, yeah, that, you know, that, that dynamic is. Well, I yeah. So, you have three children, right? Three boys. Yeah. What would what do you think would have happened if you had a fourth child who was a girl and had these three elder brothers as like older siblings? I mean, that would have been quite interesting. Oh, I, I, I feel like she would have been the toughest one, actually, with like three brothers like that she growing up. Toughest, but she'd been the most protected. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you've been like, oh, dad, because you'd have four dads, so. <laughs> for sure you know i'm a, i actually have a uh, two siblings too so we're a family of three kids and i'm the eldest child too so ben i know exactly what you probably went through <laughs> being like the extension of your parents to the other kids but also like being a sibling um so good job ben good job <laughs> but okay who ate the most growing up who would just like because I know these three boys ate a lot, you know, being the big boys they are. But who could just like That's finish hard. up? That's... I mean, I I would I would couldn't say who ate the most. I would say that Isaiah was the most adventurous eater oh. because when he was young, he would eat, you know, like your pizza with everything on it. Like yeah, yeah, very. You know, he just always had a very wide palate for right. for food, like right. at an early age. Right. And from your three boys, who do you think is the most romantic guy? Oh my goodness. Oh. This one. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, I feel like Ben, if he wanted to like really impress somebody, would bring out the piano and bring out the poetry and like just pull out all the stops. We got that from me. <laughs> all right so um you know one hour went by really fast and you know this has been such a joy to record and you know i just look forward to seeing all of you here in the philippines too mike seeing you back here with your goatee or whatever you're growing right now <laughs> uh, of course benjamin's already here i do plan to meet up with benjamin soon and that's going to be really exciting when mike comes back too sometime in february so i'm looking forward to seeing you two guys and i say uh, when you do come here too, I'm sure that you're going to fit in seamlessly. Ben, Mike, what did you tell Isaiah, non-basketball related, that he should look forward to the most about LaSalle? And none of the, I mean, we all know that how the LaSalle culture is, how the school is, but what random thing about LaSalle do you think Isaiah is going to enjoy? Oh, 
I would say uh, Ate Katz cooking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Isaiah, like like he said, is a very adventurous eater, and so uh, Ate Cat really just does everything. So I know he's gonna love that. <laughs> okay, for sure, Benjamin, you agree with that? Oh, well, um, Sabico, no. I, I think going to the malls during holiday time, Christmas time, mm-hmm. say in the in the States, it's it's not as lively, it's not as an event. But here, uh, as soon as it gets to the bird months, I mean, it just feels like Christmas forever. So I think that's something that he'll be really looking forward to. Definitely, definitely. All right. Um, I say any final words that you might want to impart before we call it a day? I just want to say thank you, Naveen, for having this interview with us. It was so nice to meet you. Uh, hopefully when I go over there, you know, uh, we can hang out more. You know, I get to know you better. And for the LaSalle community, I will do my best, you know, to make the team. And I'll work very hard and uh, to try and make the team and, and do my best. And also um, for the De La Salle um, schooling to, you know, really focus on my education and be a student first and then athlete, you know, or my dad raised us education first and the importance of education. So I hope to bring all those to De La Salle. If God willing, I'm able to make the team. Awesome. Say it again in Japanese, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to have to save that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, give him a little taste of Japanese, eh? Give him a little taste. All right. Give it, you know that, that one time I had had spoke a little Japanese, it was all from Zay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Give give us I, a line. I him, yeah, to introduce himself. You know, I can introduce myself right now for if, if you know for you know Japanese learners or listeners. Uh, konnichiwa, minasan. Wa tashino de mai wa Philip Sui Zay des. Wa tashino senko wa Asia o kenkyu des. Yoshiku nagashimas. There we go. Oh, well, I don't know exactly what that means, but this sounds super <laughs> cool. That I know for sure. <laughs> um, the Phillips family, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to seeing you boys here in Manila. You too, Tito and Tito, when you do decide to visit again. More power to all of you. And I wish you all the best of health. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. thank you. Peace, everybody. Thank you.